there. So I thought I would take you through my basic watercolor setup. I find the system works really well because everything is exactly within reach. I'm never wasting time trying to find any of my tools. Uh, I'm right-handed, so this is for a right-hand setup, but you can reverse this schematic for uh, lefties. So what I have here is my watercolor paper and it's um, stretched right now on a stiff board. And notice that I keep it far away from my palette so that I'm not accidentally splashing pigment onto the surface as I'm working. This is probably the most important tool in my uh, toolbox. It's a piece of whatever watercolor paper I'm using. So it's exactly the match to, in this case, 140 pound Arches cold press paper. I always have a test strip of it on hand so that I can not only test my colors, but find out what's in my brush in terms of um, uh, liquid. So I want to always test the ratio of water to paint. And I use this test strip almost compulsively. So with every stroke, I want to find out what's on my brush here before I find out on my paper that I've uh, got the wrong mixture. Sometimes little particles get stuck in your brush as well and uh, you end up ruining a painting three quarters of the way through. I'm speaking from experience, obviously. Uh, this here is either going to be a rag or a piece of paper towel, something that you can use to control the amount of water on your brush. And that can be during the painting process. If you've got paint on your brush, you can always use the paper towel to just remove some of the excess pigment. Or of course, between switching colors, you can rinse your brush and make sure that all of the pigment is out of your brush before you proceed to your mixture. So what I do here is, let's say I'm going to be picking up a little bit of this permanent rose color. I would test it on my test strip first and then move on to my painting. And once I'm finished with this particular color, I rinse my brush and I always wipe my brush off. I do that so that I'm not accidentally bringing more water to an existing pool of paint. I don't wanna accidentally dilute that paint on the palette unless I intentionally want to do so. So that's a, something that um, is often missed. People have a tendency to rinse their brush, wipe the brush, and then come back to the pool. And you can see that there's still quite a lot of water in the brush. So be sure to blot on the paper. Notice too that I have two pools or uh, two um, jars of water here. One I try to keep for rinsing my paintbrush and then the other one I try to keep clean so that if I do need to dilute, I'm doing so with clean water. I usually try to put out just the brushes that I anticipate using, nothing more than that so that I'm not frantically trying to find the perfect brush for whatever painting I'm working on. I just wanna have my essential tools out here and for me that's a one inch wash brush, um, my number 10 designer blend, which is half synthetic, half sable, and then a few more from my line of brushes, um, a one synthetic sable mix, a filbert for mixing my paint. So it's a stiff synthetic brush and it's a nice flat little paddle. I always have my handy fan brush, which is perfectly splayed and it remains perfectly splayed during the painting process. Um, again, that's from my ivory line of brushes. I have um, a stiff flat brush, which I often use for um, rough dry brush lines, but it's also great for mixing, or sorry, for lifting. And then I have a couple of small brushes, my synthetic liner, which is great for masking fluid, a natural hair liner, great for painting, and then um, a number three round. So I've got my jar of brushes, my jars of water, my palette all the way to the right hand side. And then I keep handy a spray bottle and then Kleenex for blotting my actual painting should I have any um, areas that I wish to blot. I have on hand my masking fluid, some soap and a rubber cement pickup. 
which is used for uh, removing the masking fluid on my artwork. So there you have it, a very efficient, very neat and tidy space. That's all you need. I suggest removing all additional clutter. If you want to check out my blog on my website, I have um, a post there about keeping a clear space and how that frees up your mind and allows a little bit more clarity during the painting process.